Saturday, April 24th, 2021, Monaco 64, home of alternative economics and contrarian views. Billy and I are a bit late today. And why? Well, because I went to play golf early today. I went around 8.30. I had to wait a little bit because we, we showed up, about 18 of us, and we had like a swindle. And unfortunately, I was picked to play in the last group, so I had to wait about 40 minutes uh, to tee off after I got there. And it was a slow day, unfortunately. So I got home a little later than I thought. Uh, and uh, I saw a message from uh, one of the viewers uh, from Larry Ferris. And he says, Maneco 64, as just a topic suggestion. And since there are a lot of us new precious metal uh, investors watching your YouTube channel, perhaps you could do an episode or maybe a two-part series explaining how uh, the spot price of gold is determined, what role during the night the Asian markets play, and why even among bullion dealers their prices for spot varies at given a moment uh, for supposedly spot not including their premium. In fact, the spot they quote rarely agrees with kitco.com or uh, goldprice.org. They're close, but usually a few dollars different. Again, at the same moment in time. Anyway, a topic some of us new folks might find fascinating to hear your explanation. Well, uh, in any market, uh, prices are de determined by uh, the bid and the offer price. And uh, gold is a very liquid market. It's traded everywhere around the world. Uh, including in Asia. It's traded um, in futures exchanges. Uh, it's not really uh, physical gold, but futures contracts. But the biggest uh, really uh, gold market is the interbank uh, market. A and that's uh, over the counter. Basically, the big international banks, the big Hong Kong, uh, Chinese, Japanese banks, uh, they trade amongst each other. They have clients as well uh, that call them and say, where is your price for spot gold? Or uh, versus the dollar, the symbol is XAUUSD. That's the foreign exchange uh, symbol for gold. F for silver, it's XAGUSD. I remember when I started out in the business, I worked for a small private bank in Geneva, Switzerland, we did a lot of foreign exchange. And we had positions in XAUUSD and XAGUSD. Those positions were in the over-the-counter market. Uh, they were traded amongst uh, banks. Uh, the bank we used for foreign exchange was the Republic uh, National Bank in Geneva. And I always remember we had a, a book with all our FX positions, like forward positions. So uh, I'll come to the spot in a minute. So a forward position is when you call Republic National Bank and you say, I want to buy gold versus the dollar or X XAU USD. And, and I want to buy a forward in th uh, three months time. So they make you a forward price. A and that price will be higher than the spot price because it will add on the cost of storage. Uh, so that's called the contango. And then in three months time, that trade will settle. So that's a forward, three month forward. You could do a one week forward or two week, a three week, a, a one month. So what's the spot price? Spot price is very simple. It can also uh, be called uh, the cash price. So I've looked up on Wikipedia just to make it simple. And it says a foreign exchange spot transaction in gold and silver are traded as foreign exchange. Also known as FX spot is an agreement between two parties to buy one currency against selling another currency at an agreed price for settlement on the spot date. Uh, the exchange rate at which the transaction is done is called the spot exchange rate. 
As of 2010, the average daily turnover of global FX spot transactions reached nearly one and a half trillion dollars, counting for 37.4 percent of all foreign exchange transactions. So the rest of the uh, 62.6 percent are forwards, right? Uh, FX spot transactions increased by 38 percent to two trillion. So that's not really what we're looking for. So this is the uh, important part. And this is where we will differentiate the spot or cash price to the forward or futures price. A futures price is basically a forward price, but on an exchange, a forward price is traded over the counter uh, amongst uh, banks, amongst clients and their banks. The standard settlement time frame for foreign exchange spot transaction is T plus two, i.e. two business days from the trade date. So um, let's say on Monday, what day is it gonna be? The 26th, if I buy spot gold, if I call JP Morgan, which I won't of course, and buy spot gold, I will have to pay for that gold on Wednesday, the 28th, that spot. Uh, the next day uh, is not spot, it's actually called Tom Next. <laughs> yeah, it, it's complicated, but that's the way it works. Uh, they say though that there are some notable exceptions uh, for uh, spot price. Uh, US uh, Canadian, US uh, Turkish, uh, US, I think that's Filipino peso, US ruble, and offshore US. KZT, that's probably Kazakhstan, US, Pakistani rupee pairs. They settle, their spot is T plus one day. So if you're trading uh, the Canadian dollar versus the US dollar, if you do a spot trade, uh, you settle it the next day. But all the other ones, gold and silver included, is T plus two. So that's all it is, the spot price. And why are there different uh, spot prices? At trading at the same time? Well, because it's an over-the-counter market. It, it's not a, a, a centralized market on an exchange. So uh, why are the prices uh, from Kitco and gold price different, different than the spot? Well, you'd need to ask Kitco what feed they use for their spot price. I've noticed as well on um, business channels, which I don't usually watch that much, but I've seen it before, that uh, CNBC or Bloomberg uh, TV, uh, they use like the uh, the front month futures contract for their, their gold price. And usually the, the, the futures contract trades at a premium to the spot price because it's usually uh, two to three months forward and you've got the contango. So if the spot price, let's say, is 1780, uh, you might see uh, Bloomberg saying, uh, quoting, or CNBC saying it's 1784. But uh, yeah, the, the spot price might be 1780. That's why it looks confusing. So, what happens uh, during Asian hours, uh, let's say, when uh, New Zealand, Australia, uh, Tokyo, uh, Hong Kong open on Sunday night. Well, there's two things that happen. You have COMEX that opens, and, and COMEX is a forward market, a futures market. And it's not uh, over the counter, of course. It, it's exchange, exchange traded. So right now, for example, the, uh, the front month uh, futures contract is the June 2021 contract. So it looks like here, I think the last uh, trading on Friday was at 6 p.m. New York, and it traded at 1776.70. You will find probably that that price, uh, that June price, will be a little higher than spot when things open back up uh, on Sunday night. And, and the spot price that you'll see trading on Sunday night is not COMEX price. It, it's feeds from major banks, trading in Hong Kong, in, in New Zealand, in Australia, and they, they quote the spot price. And usually, I, I look at the spot price, I have a broker, IG.com in the UK, 
they do spread trading they also uh, do uh, stock market uh, trading i have a nice uh, account which is a tax-free account and uh, the spread trading account they they quote the spot price so when I'm quoting you the prices in the morning, that's the spot price. Uh, if you want to look at the spot price, I, I recommend, for example, uh, XAU. If you do XAU USD and then Bloomberg uh, Google, you'll get the spot price on Bloomberg, on the Bloomberg page. Uh, I don't subscribe to Bloomberg but you can have a look at the price. It, it settled at 1777.20 uh, Friday night, the spot price, XAU USD. So uh, the price, let's say that Kitco quotes, is probably the same price, but they might get the feed from a different bank. It depends. It, the, it, you could have prices trading pretty much very, fairly different at the same time, but they usually uh, trade at the same price because there's people arbitraging at these prices. So uh, there's little discrepancy unless uh, things get very uh, busy and there's a lot of volatility. You might see the price of gold uh, spot price trading at, at different uh, prices. I also recommend if you want to look at where the spot price is, that you go into netdania.com, and this is the page here. They've got the Forex quotes, and you can see at the bottom, they've got gold and silver cash prices. So, and those prices are probably fed to them from different banks that trade gold and silver. They're fed continuously when the market is open. Uh, so uh, the uh, spot price and the interbank uh, price for gold is probably traded 24-7, uh, mainly because <laughs> these banks keep going 24 hours. When New York closes, uh, then uh, New Zealand opens and, and, and so on. And of course, you also get the um, futures price. And I, I've noted, for example, uh, Silver Doctors, they used to, to put up the gold and silver price, and it used to always be different from my, my spot price. That's because they 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 uh, put the feed to the front month future on COMEX. So let's say um, there's a rollover from the front month to the next front month. So right in the beginning, that's when the, the biggest uh, premium will have the biggest premium uh, between spots and the, fut the futures price because uh, it's just a new uh, front month and there's a lot of time left in that future so the premium will be higher and there are some people also who who uh, quote they call it the spot futures price which is an oxymoron but actually isn't for example the April um, futures contract uh, right now is in the delivery period so if you buy or sell April gold. It's basically like trading spot because you're gonna have to settle uh, in two days. And uh, so, yeah, that is a spot uh, futures price, but usually people don't trade that un unless they wanna take delivery. So I, I could buy the um, April uh, spot future, which I don't like saying, but that's what it is, or the April spot. Uh, on Monday and take a uh, delivery uh, on Wednesday. So I, I buy the contract, I give notice, and then I'll take delivery. So that's like trading spot as well. So what about the banks? Uh, as you saw, about a third of FX transactions are spot or cash. So, and I would say probably for gold is the same. Uh, most people are trading uh, forward. So uh, unless you're going to take delivery, you're not going to trade a, a spot gold because you're not going to uh, be taking delivery. Or you could do unallocated and then you have to settle in two days. And the way it works is that your position with your bank will show that you have, let's say, a thousand ounces of gold. And then you have to pay the dollars to settle that in two days. You won't get delivery because it's unallocated. But if you uh, call your bank and you say, 
I want to buy allocated gold. I want to take delivery uh, spot. They'll have to do it. If they can't do it, that means they can't deliver to you. So that's the difference. And uh, how are these prices, um, how can I say, made? Well, it's just like any other uh, market. Let's say you call JP Morgan, and, and I'm not saying this because I like JP Morgan, I'm just giving you an example. So I'm Mario, and, and how do I know this? Because actually my boss is in Switzerland. When I was joined the, the firm, uh, I was always watching the dealer do the, tr the trades. And one day they said, uh, Mario, uh, we want you to come in early. Uh, and I used to live near the office because we need to do, uh, one of our clients is gonna call to do it for an exchange trade. And we want you to call the bank. So that's how I learned it. So this client called, so I called uh, Republic National Bank and I asked the dealer where where is your quote for dollar mark at the time you had Deutsche Mark so he, he said uh, my bid is this and my offer is this and then I'll say okay I'm gonna sell you you know I'm gonna hit the bid so you never tell them uh, which way you are you don't say I need to sell because you, you just ask them for a quote but to uh, just a little bit of a uh, a story, uh, the first uh, trade I did for an exchange, I knew the dealer at Republic National Bank because I used to talk to him because the main dealer uh, at my bank, at the private bank, Carlos, he was really nice and uh, I used to talk to him and the other guys. And when I called for the first transaction that I did, and I think it was $5 million mark, which is quite big, and he made me a choice price. So what's a choice price? Well, that means that the bid and offer are the same. So actually, he wasn't going to make anything on it. So that's how the price is made. In the futures, it's the same thing. Uh, you call your broker and you say, I want to work a bid. Or you tell him, can you lift the offer? You know, lift the offer. And usually in the futures market, uh, you hit the bid and you lift the offer. And the other... Uh, terminology that we use in the markets. Uh, you don't uh, buy at, you pay for, because at is uh, synonymous with selling. So when you say to your banker or broker, uh, I wanna buy at, <laughs> that's confusing. You say, I wanna pay uh, so, so much for a million a thousand ounces, let's say, or, and then I want to offer or sell at. So that's all it is. So yes, the spot price can be different at the same time because you've got dozens if not hundreds of counterparties trading it over the counter on, on the phone through the screens. And the futures price, of course, is centralized on COMEX or CME. And that's why that price will probably be always like, there won't be a different price. Uh, but of course, the futures price is always uh, at a premium to the spot price. Sometimes there is backwardation. That's when there's a, a lot of demand for uh, cash delivery for spot delivery when people want the physical now and not forward a lot of times you'll see the uh, the spot price be higher than the futures price but that's uh, not a common occurrence and that's called backwardation that's a subject for another uh, time so hopefully not not just for Larry Ferris this has helped I don't think I need to do a part two I think it's quite self-explanatory. I hope it helps everyone else understand the, the difference between a spot forward and futures. So there you go. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the like button. Please share it far and wide. Think about subscribing to my channel if you haven't yet. And you can also follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and all these other platforms below here. I wish you all a great rest of the weekend. Take care. Bye.